Today's reading is from Paul's letter to the people of Ephesus, people who personally knew what it meant to be hurt, offended, and persecuted. I am reading selected verses from chapter 4. So I'm telling you this, and I insist on it in the Lord. You shouldn't live your life like the Gentiles anymore. They base their lives on pointless thinking, and they're in the dark in their reasoning. They are disconnected from God's life because of their ignorance and their closed hearts. You didn't learn that kind of thing from Christ. Since you really listened to him and you were taught how the truth is in Jesus, change the former way of life that was part of the person you once were, corrupted by deceitful desires. Instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourselves with the new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that benefits those who hear what you say. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, here we are at the movies again. This is week two of a series we've done many summers now where we take a popular movie and try to illustrate a scripture passage or a biblical truth. And today's movie is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, the story of Mr. Rogers, the TV icon, who who also happened to be a Presbyterian pastor. Any of you grow up watching Mr. Rogers? Yeah, I talked to my sister Maria this week. We were talking about our memories of watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and she said, I always felt like he liked me. I remember feeling the same way, too. You know, his goal in life was to help children find positive ways to deal with their feelings. And in this world right now where our neighborhoods don't always feel so beautiful, I think this is maybe a good message for us to revisit today. Well, the opening scene, Mr. Roger introduces us to his friend, Lloyd. Lloyd Vogel is an investigative reporter, an award-winning investigative reporter for Esquire magazine. And in this opening scene, Lloyd and his wife, Andrea, are packing up their suitcases. They're getting ready to go to Lloyd's sister's wedding. And Andrea tells Lloyd that his father is going to be at this wedding. And this really upsets Lloyd. You see, him and his dad had had a super challenging relationship for many years. In fact, they haven't even spoken or seen each other in years. Well, at the wedding, Lloyd and his father get in a huge argument, and Lloyd ends up punching his dad. And then someone else punches Lloyd, and it's this huge, big, embarrassing mess. And so Andrea takes Lloyd outside to talk about it. shares how he's had moments in his life where he's been hurt. But then he shifts his attention to the viewer. Now back in the day when the movie, when the show was filmed, the viewer would have been children. But in light of the movie and today's message, the viewer is you. So how about you? Have you ever had moments where you've been hurt? Where someone has said or done something that deeply hurt you or offended you? Mr. Rogers says there's always something we can do with the mad or the sad that we feel inside. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, this movie was inspired by an interview with Mr. Rogers in Esquire magazine that Tom Janad wrote back in November of 1998. And in the movie, Tom Janad's character is Lloyd. And Lloyd is carrying around a lot of pain and resentment and anger. And one day at work, he gets a very unusual assignment. It's 
So Lloyd schedules an interview with Mr. Rogers, and he flies to Pittsburgh to the set where they're filming Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And when he arrives, Mr. Rogers is trying to put up a tent. And he's having a lot of difficulties, and he never actually gets the tent set up. And so his staff suggests that they reshoot the scene. And Mr. Rogers says, no, 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 we'll, we'll keep it. And then he walks over and introduces himself to Lloyd, and he notices Lloyd's face. And Lloyd says, uh, pay no attention, it's a softball injury, it was actually a play at the plate. And then they sit down, and the interview begins. Although Lloyd is there to interview Mr. Rogers, this starts to feel more like a counseling session for Lloyd. See, Mr. Rogers thinks that for Lloyd to have punched his father, there's got to be more to the story. And of course, he's right. Lloyd's dad, Jerry, had many affairs while he was married to Lloyd's mom. And then he left Lloyd's mom and the kids while she was dying of cancer. And Lloyd has these deep wounds and scars that he's been carrying around ever since. Maybe some of you resonate with that pain. Or someone saying or doing something that hurt or offended you. So what do you do with that pain? Do you want to hurt the other person just like they hurt you? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, isn't that what the Bible says? Or, or maybe you stuff that pain way down deep inside and just decide you're never going to talk about it again. When those moments arise in this imperfect world with imperfect people, what do you do? Well, the Apostle Paul had his fair share of moments where he was wronged and hurt, but he also wronged and hurt a whole lot of people. The law and the land when he was living was actually an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You hurt me, I hurt you right back. But Jesus arrives and everything is turned upside down, including Paul's life. And Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say to you that you must not oppose those who want to hurt you. If people slap you on your right cheek, you must turn your left cheek to them as well. And the people that Paul was writing to in today's scripture were people who understood pain and loss and persecution. And so in this letter, he's trying to speak into that. And he says, so I'm telling you, and I insist, I insist on this in the Lord, you shouldn't live your life like the Gentiles anymore. They base their lives on pointless thinking, and they are in the dark in their reasoning. Paul is saying, stop acting like people who don't know God. Stop acting like people who don't know how much they are loved by God. Instead, he goes on, he says, you didn't learn this kind of thing from Christ. So instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with a new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. He's saying that's not who you are. That's not whose you are. You have the Spirit of God dwelling within you. So allow God to renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put aside all bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, and slander, along with every other kind of evil. When someone hurts us or offends us, our human tendency is to want to get even and to hang on to that pain and resentment. I know I've done that more times than I care to admit. I once left a job because the work environment became so toxic that for my own health and well-being, I needed to leave. And then after I left, I heard stories being told about me that simply were not true. And then other people who had also left and who had been hurt started calling, and we would unpack those hurts with each other over and over and over again. And in the moment, it felt really good. But I eventually became to understand that when I did that, I just kept tearing that wound open, and I wasn't allowing my heart to heal. And so after a couple of years, a couple of years, and a lot of hard work and a lot of prayer, I was finally able to forgive my offender and let it go. Now, you may be sitting here or at home and saying, let it go? 
Let it go? That is easier said than done. And you're right. In this world where there is so much evil and hatred and violence, let it go? That's hard. You're right. And because it's hard doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. Paul says, be kind, compassionate, and forgiving of each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. You want to heal the hurt in your heart? You have to forgive the other person. Let it go. Paul's not saying that what they did was okay or to pretend like it never happened. He simply says, forgive them. And to forgive them, you have to acknowledge what they did and you have to talk about it. You have to tell them how what they did hurt you. Paul says in order for you to heal, you have to forgive the debt. They actually owe you nothing. An apology would be great, but if it doesn't happen, let it go. Paul says, and before you think I'm asking too much of you, let me remind you what Christ has done for you. Live your life with love, following the example of Christ, who showed us and gave himself for us. He was a sacrificial offering that smelled sweet to God. See, Jesus has already set the example for us by dying for our sins and forgiving us. He set aside his rightness for our righteousness. Paul saying, be like Jesus. Well, back to the movie. Lloyd goes home one day and finds his father and his father's girlfriend in the kitchen with Andrea, and he blows a gasket. And him and his dad get into a big argument, and his dad gets so upset that he suffers a heart attack. And so an ambulance comes and takes him to the hospital, and while Lloyd's there in the hospital, he remembers and has these um, feelings that he had when his mom was in the hospital, and he just can't take it. And so he tells Andrea, I gotta go, I can't, I can't do this. And he jumps on a bus bound for Pittsburgh, and his emotional breakdown begins. And when he arrives at the studio of Mr. Rogers, he collapses. And when he wakes up, he's in a bed in Mr. Rogers' home. And later that day, over a meal, Mr. Rogers tries to help Lloyd forgive his father. Did you see what he did there? Mr. Rogers looked into the camera and into the eyes of the viewer, into your eyes. You had a moment to be part of this movie because the director realized that Lloyd wasn't the only person who needed a minute of silence. So how did that silence make you feel? Was it awkward? Uncomfortable? Maybe it was refreshing? Was there someone special that came to mind? Well, Lloyd flies back to his family, a changed man, and he and Andrea go to visit his father only to find his father in a hospital bed in his living room. And that night, while seated beside his dad's bed, Lloyd and his dad finally have an honest, heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And his dad tells him he apologizes and asks for his forgiveness and tells him how much he loves him. And Lloyd said, I love you too, Dad. Well, the next day there's a knock at the door, and guess who it is? Mr. Rogers. So Mr. Rogers comes in, and he's seated with the family in the living room, and they're having a conversation, and the conversation takes a little bit of an awkward turn. And so Mr. Rogers offers these words of advice. Is manageable. But our wounds and offenses often get swept under the rug, never to be talked about again. But to be imperfect in this imperfect, to be imperfect with our words and our actions is to be human. And anything human is mentionable, and anything mentionable is manageable. And as people who have the Spirit of God dwelling within us, anything manageable is also achievable. So in those moments when you are wounded or hurt, go to the person to talk about it and expect the best from that person because they may offer you an apology before you even ask for it. And if they don't, let it go. For the sake of your soul, let it go. And God will begin to heal your heart. Let's pray. 
Loving God, all of us have moments when we have been personally wounded. In light of where our world is right now, we know there is a lot of pain and grieving and anger going on everywhere. As imperfect people, we have the natural tendency to hurt one another. But you, you offer a different solution. May the grace that you so freely give to us, let us now extend to other people. It's the name, in the name of Jesus that we believe and we pray. Amen.